Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I want to talk about tools that you need to work on your Toyota 4Runner. Now, I know a lot of you guys are DIY mechanics like myself, and you're probably wondering what kinds of tools do you actually need to work on your Toyota 4Runner? So in this video, I'm going to talk about five sets of tools that I think everybody should buy before they actually start working on their Toyota 4Runner. And these tools are the tools that I always use in my videos, and they're always the tools that I constantly grab every time I go and do a job. Now, I own a lot of tools in my toolbox over there, and I'll tell you, more than half of those tools are maybe one-time use, and the other half are probably not even used at all. So I'm going to save you guys a lot of hassle and money, and just show you guys the tools that I use all the time. And if you guys plan on doing mods or maintenance to your Toyota 4Runner and you want to save a whole bunch of money, these are the tools I'm going to suggest you guys buy first. So let's go ahead and get into those tools now. All right, the first thing I'm going to recommend in terms of tools is a very good socket set and a 3 8 inch ratchet. Now this here came from a Craftsman set that I bought almost 15 years ago. And it actually came with a ratchet that's not this one, but it has a metric set for 3 8 inch. It also has standard, which I don't really use. And then it also came with a half inch set for metric. This one I use sometimes as well. Now, really the most important thing is this metric 3 8 inch here. And on Toyotas, you'll notice as you start working on it that you're gonna be using the 10 millimeter, the 12, the 14, and the 17 quite often. And then it helps to have deep socket ones as well. And this Craftsman set comes with most of those. It actually doesn't come with all of them, but it comes with most of them. And to be honest, I typically go to this set first because I always use a 10 millimeter and you can tell it's a 10 millimeter by this shape here, which is kind of nice. And then over here as well. And I already know that these two are always 10 millimeter and the 12s and the 14s aren't too far away. Now I use these all the time and they have never failed me. I've used it for, like I said, 15 plus years now. Now this set used to be sold at Sears for about $60 and it actually came with a lot more than this. It came with sockets as well as wrenches and all kinds of other things. But the sockets are the ones that I use the most from that set. Now once you have the socket set, you're gonna need something to use the sockets on. And this is where I recommend you get a 3 8 inch flex head ratchet. Now this one here is made by Pittsburgh and it's from Harbor Freight and I really like this one and this is the one that I grab almost every single time when I start a new job. It's decently long. It's also got this lettering in the back that tells me if it's going on or off because half the time I can't remember when I'm under the vehicle and I really like this comfort grip because after a while your hands start getting greasy and this actually helps quite a bit and it's also more comfortable in your hand as you're working on your vehicle. Now the reason why I say I like this one the best is because I actually own quite a few more of these and I never grab the other ones. I only grab this one. So like I said, I own quite a bit of 3 8 inch ratchets and to be honest, I don't use this one. You can toss that one. I use a stubby one once in a while, but really not necessary. This is just a nice to have. This extra long gear wrench one, I don't really use either. It is nice to have the leverage but it doesn't have the comfort grip. I have a shorter version of the 3 8 inch, which sometimes I use, but to be honest, I don't really use this one at all. I also have this one. This one's made by Tecton, and it has the same swivel head here. It's a little bit different because it has stops in them, which is kind of odd. This one kind of has infinite positions here, and it's just held in by friction. But this one I used to use all the time, but now I don't use at all because, again, it doesn't have the comfort grip. So if I were you, I would recommend getting this Harbor Freight one. I think it's about $30 or maybe $20 on sale. And I like this one so much that I actually went and bought the half-inch version as well. So I have a half-inch and a 3 8 inch. And these two right here go great with this set. Now, like I mentioned, if you're going to buy a socket set, make sure you get a 10, 12, 14, 17, and 19. This one doesn't have a 19, but the way I got around it is I use a three quarter inch here from the standard set. But normally today, if you were to go to Harbor Freight or go buy a tool set, it's gonna have the 17 as well as the 19 for you. And just with that alone, that'll get quite a bit done. And if you wanna go up to the half inch, you wanna make sure you have a 14, a 17, a 19, and a 21, 24, 27, and 30. 
Now you're not going to find all of those in the half inch, but there are some sets where you can buy that will come with all of those. But if you can get at least a 19 in the half inch, then that'll help you break apart a lot of stuff. So like I said, I only paid $60 for this entire set. This was back in the day when Sears had their, you know, 200 plus kits. It came with all these things as well as the ratchet itself. And I don't really use that ratchet anymore since I have this flex head one. And I've even talked to my brother-in-law who is a master mechanic and he still has his original Craftsman set. And that just goes to tell you that even those guys who use these tools daily for eight hours a day, they were still using the Craftsman set. That just shows you that you don't have to spend a whole lot of money and it will still last a long time. All right guys, next up is to make sure you have a decent jack so you can lift up your vehicle. Now you could get by by using the bottle jack, but that's gonna limit you in some of the jobs you can do. It's gonna be more helpful to have a three ton jack with maybe a block of wood. The block of wood is only useful if you plan on lifting your vehicle a lot. It will help you get it high enough to get the wheels off. Now I use this three ton steel and aluminum hybrid jack and it's been working for me. I used to use a Craftsman one and that one had no control. And what I mean by that is when you lift the vehicle and you try to lower it by loosening this um, handle here, what would happen is it would drop super fast and it was kind of dangerous. So I ended up tossing that thing and I got one of these and it's been working a whole lot better ever since. Now you don't need to spend a whole lot of money for this. You can just go for a standard steel one at Harbor Freight. I think they run about $170 and sometimes they go on sale for maybe 130 bucks. Now, if you plan on doing any serious suspension work or any work that requires the whole vehicle to be off the ground, you'll probably want to get some six ton jack stands for your vehicle. I used to only have three ton jack stands and they did work for a decent amount of time because you can actually use three ton ones for the rear axle. But when you get to the front, it gets a little bit more sketchy and tricky. And usually what I ended up doing was just using the jack to lift it up and do the work unsafely with the jack. Now those days are long gone and I now have six ton jack stands and this makes it safer and easier to work on the vehicle. Now you don't necessarily need a jack to do all jobs on this, but if you plan on doing any suspension work, then you definitely want to get one. Again, if you only have a socket set, you could do plenty in the engine bay. You can even change your oil and you can do all kinds of stuff even without this jack. All right, on to number three, the next essential tool I think everybody should have, and it's relatively inexpensive, is a flashlight. Now I used to not think these were necessary until I started working on the vehicle more and more, and especially under the vehicle. And even if you're outside in bright daylight, there is still no lighting down there. And having these little flashlights are very handy, especially the ones that can swivel and fold in different directions, and especially ones that have magnets on them, because you can just stick this somewhere on the frame or somewhere on the axle or something down there, and now you have a third set of hands holding this for you to light up the area that you need lit up. Now you can go ahead and buy those expensive astro lights or snap-on lights or whatever, I found that these Harbor Freight ones work pretty good for DIY mechanics. And most of the times they do a pretty good job. Now, sometimes they do flicker once in a while. These ones have been abused and dropped and maybe some of the connections are getting loose or something. I noticed that sometimes they do flicker on me when I'm working on something and it gets really annoying. And that's why I actually bought a second one. But again, these things are only $20 on sale. So you kind of get what you pay for, but 90% of the time when they're working, they are amazing. Lighting is so important in a vehicle, and even though I have a lot of light in my garage here, sometimes when you're over the light, it casts a shadow and you can't see anything. And it's really helpful to have that little flashlight just pinpoint where you're trying to look. I like the flashlight so much, I even got backup batteries and a backup charger for it, so I'm never without lighting. All right guys, this next tool here is completely optional, and this is a M12 electric ratchet. And I love this thing because it helps speed the job up and actually makes working on your vehicle pleasurable. Now earlier I mentioned those 3 8 inch sockets. Well these go right into the tool and this will let you unbolt and take things off very quickly. It has a decent amount of torque to it and it actually can break really light fasteners as well. But the reason why I like this one specifically is because it actually works as a regular ratchet. So you can actually use it to just undo your bolt and once you've cracked it open now you can just use the ratcheting motion to take it off quicker. So you can imagine if you're tearing down an engine or tearing down a whole bunch of bolts or whatever, this will make things much quicker. Now I actually do own an air ratchet as well. And to be honest, I've only used this one time to do a timing belt job. And the only reason I use this tool is because it's a little bit smaller profile than this M12 ratchet here. But in all honesty, I probably could have gotten away with just using this. I just wanted to use this for whatever reason. But this tool basically sits in the toolbox here as it never gets used and I never pull it out. And one of the reasons why I never pull it out is because I have to use my air tank 
to actually run this tool. And the air tank can get quite loud and obnoxious and it always runs out of air and it has to keep turning itself back on and it gets really old. With this tool, you can just take off the battery and just swap it out for a new battery. And I've got a couple spare ones and this tool gets used a lot. And actually, I've never had a full battery run out on me on any job that I've ever done. Now, speaking of electric drivers, before I had one of these, I actually used this quarter inch impact driver instead. Now, this thing used to be used quite a bit to take off all those 10 millimeters and 12 millimeters, and it made quick work of things. This thing is very useful to take to the junkyard as well because it makes quick work of basically anything you wanna pull off that's small. Now, you can see here, it's just the same bit on the end here. It's just a quarter inch driver that goes into the chuck and then it goes to a 3 8 and now you can take things off really quickly. This is very useful for taking off the skid plate because this impact driver is actually a little bit faster than that M12 ratchet, but they both pretty much do the same thing. Now this does take a lot more space than the other one, so sometimes I'll reach for this, but like I said, most of the times I'm gonna reach for this tool, and even though it's a little bit slower than this tool, it's much more versatile and it still gets bolts off relatively quickly. Now if you wanna own both of these tools, I definitely recommend you get the M12 version of this impact driver. They make a very small compact one and my brother-in-law actually does body work and he says he uses that thing all day long every day. Now the reason for that is because it's a lot smaller than this. It's an M12 battery so it's very compact and it gets all those doors and all kinds of things off really quickly and it makes his job much faster. Now like I mentioned these tools are completely optional and you don't need these tools to actually do the job but they will make your DIY experience a lot more pleasurable. Now speaking of those impact drivers, I actually own a half inch and a 3 8 inch impact air gun as well. And you probably can't tell from the camera, but these things look pretty much brand new because they've never been used. And they've just been sitting in my toolbox for basically ever since I bought them. I maybe tried it one time and they're not very useful these days because of all the electric tools that have come out. So if I were you guys, I'd stay away from air tools and just go straight to electric. All right guys, last but not least, I wanna bring your attention to my wrench set here. You can see back here, I got a whole bunch of wrenches and to be honest, a lot of them are not used. I used to use these Craftsman ones only and they're just standard open end box wrenches and they worked fine for a long time. But in the spirit of getting things done quicker and more making it more pleasurable, I definitely recommend you get some of these gear wrench ones that have this ratcheting. Now there's gonna be times where this won't fit in what you need to do. That's where those box end ones come in handy. But if you have the means to get some of these gear wrench ones or some ratcheting ones, I recommend you get some of these because this will make taking stuff off much quicker and much easier. And sometimes you can't use that M12 ratchet in certain places and this will make things much easier to take off, especially in tight places. If you plan on working on Toyotas only, I definitely recommend you just get a 10, 12, 14, and a 17. Now, if you wanna get fancy and you think you need something bigger, then you definitely can get some of these ratcheting flex head ones. Now, these are super pricey and they come in a set and you basically get a 10, 12, 14, 17, 19, basically all the common sizes. And I use these sometimes when I can't get to certain places, but again, I hardly use these and some of them have probably never been used before, but definitely these 10, 12, and 14s definitely get used. Now, you can clearly see here, I have a tool problem and I have a lot of tools. You can see this one is for like bigger 20 millimeter bolts. And usually alignment shops have these because they're big and they can get to them easier. But if you're a DIY mechanic, you're probably not gonna have the room under your vehicle to even use this. And I'll be honest with you guys, I think I've only used the 21 millimeter and maybe the 22. This 24 looks like it's never been used and it's just sitting there as a shiny ornament on my wall here. And not only do I have the flex head one, I also have the straight ones as well. And again, these are not used, so I would recommend you guys save all your money because these were quite expensive. I think it's about $200 for a set. So definitely don't get these. The only ones I recommend you guys getting are these ratcheting ones, and they're not flex head. And these ones are actually cheaper. If you do get the flex head ones, those are better, and I do recommend you get those if you can, but they're quite expensive. I made the mistake of buying these longer flex head ones and I didn't want to go and spend another 150 or $200 for the shorter flex head ones, which would probably be more useful. All right, guys, I know the thumbnail only says five tools, but I have one more honorable mention that I want to mention to you guys. That is this 18 volt half inch impact. Now, you guys probably saw earlier, I have an air ratchet impact, and that a half inch air impact is pretty powerful, but when it comes to the convenience, I'd rather just use this electric one. Now this one here is made by Makita, but you can also buy a Milwaukee one or a DeWalt one. 
and there's all kinds of flavors out there. This one has 1,300 foot-pounds of braking force, and this is what you want to use if you're trying to break free a crank bolt or you're trying to break free an axle nut or even lug nuts. I mean, whatever it may be, this guy will take it off. Now, this guy is pretty heavy, and it definitely hurts your arm using it after a while. I mean, I'm not that buff, but you know, holding this thing, even for filming here, is already uncomfortable. So you can see you can only use it for certain things. And if I know I'm gonna do a lot of suspension work or I'm going to the junkyard and I know I'm gonna pull an e-locker, this thing makes quick work of things and it will definitely save you a lot of time. Now, like I said, you don't need this tool. There are other tools you can rent or use to get by without having to buy one of these. But having one of these is definitely helpful and I've used this thing a number of times already. And I actually used this to do my re-gear to actually tighten that pinion nut because you have to tighten it very tight to crush that crush sleeve. But not everybody's gonna be doing a gear job, and so this tool is gonna to be quite limited in what you're gonna need it for. And most of the time it just sits in the drawer, but when I need it, I know I have it, and it comes out, and it just uses an 18 volt battery, so it's very simple to deploy. All right guys, those are pretty much all the tools I think you would need if you wanna start working on your 4Runner and you don't wanna spend a whole lot of money. Those tools are pretty basic, and some of those tools you probably already own, which is good. And some of the other tools, like I mentioned, they have a lot of value add, and I definitely recommend you consider them if you plan on working on your Toyota 4Runner a lot. Now this list isn't completely comprehensive, and if you think I missed something that's essential, let me know down in the comments below, and that way the other viewers can see it. Now like I said, I looked through my entire toolbox, and these are the ones that I always pull out every single time I do the job. Now there are gonna be cases where you will need other tools, and I definitely recommend you just buy those when you actually get to those jobs. So that way you don't have a whole bunch of tools that you're never gonna use. I'll give you an example, like this 35 millimeter socket here, you're probably not gonna need this until you actually have to do a CV axle. So don't buy this until you actually need it. There's gonna be a lot of tools like that, like an E14 socket or a spark plug socket. Those you can just buy when you actually do the job and then you can just add it to your toolbox. Well guys, as always, I'm gonna leave links to products mentioned in this video down in the video description. So make sure you guys check that out. I'm gonna see if I can do my best to find similar products for things that I think will work just as good as the ones I mentioned in this video. Basically stuff that I would buy if I was starting fresh, so that way you guys don't have to do a whole lot of guesswork. Well guys, if you guys like this video, don't forget to hit that like button, it really helps my channel out a lot. If you guys have any ideas, like I said, put them down in the comments below. If you guys like this channel, make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. And as always guys, I'll see you guys in the next video.